Uh, Iowa ranks third in the country for the number of problematic puppy breeders in the state. That is according to what's called the Horrible Hundred List, compiled each year by the Humane Society of the U.S. and as the name suggests, includes 100 breeders documented by the society as having sick or injured dogs, inhumane and unsafe conditions, and a lack of protection from the heat or the cold. Local Five's Rachel Droz tells us steps you can take so you don't unknowingly purchase a puppy mill pet. Filthy conditions, layers of matted hair, and emaciated body conditions. All critical problems listed on state inspectors' animal welfare reports. 11 breeders in Iowa made the Humane Society's horrible hundred list. Today, I spoke to one of them. Hi, my name is Rachel Droz. I'm a reporter at Channel 5. Her name is Anita Wickstrom, and she lives in Ames. Wickstrom has appeared on the Horrible 100 list twice now. The report says there have been multiple instances of her facility being dirty, but a few months ago, the state found Wickstrom's facility was back in compliance with animal welfare laws. I was cleared in December. I made all the what she wanted done, and, and she approved me. So I, I'm not sure why it came back in the paper. So how can you make sure that you're getting a healthy pup? Well, you should be asking a lot of questions. Find out about the puppy's parents, conditions at the breeder's facility or the pet store, and be sure to check if the breeder is licensed and if there are any complaints filed against them. Once you know the name of the breeder, it's easy to look that up on the Department of Agriculture, Iowa Department of Agriculture's website. Find out what the inspections, if they're licensed in Iowa, say about them. Or look at the USDA inspection reports. But really, I think the most important thing do a face-to-face -face visit. Doing your research before buying could save you money in vet bills down the road. Rachel Droz, Local 5 News, We Are Iowa. Animal rights groups feel breeding facilities don't really have enough oversight. Commercial breeders have to be licensed through the USDA and the state. Inspectors make unannounced visits. State inspections happen at least once a year. The USDA says they conduct, quote, routine inspections. Those happen more frequently if a breeder has had past violations. But the Humane Society feels breeders are getting away with repeated violations because they aren't being fined and are able to renew their licenses. Iowa has already taken some actions to keep pets safer. Last year, the Iowa Department of Agriculture created new rules for commercial breeders. State inspectors can now penalize breeders if they don't protect their animals from extreme temperatures and weather. Keep uh, pets housing clean and give their pets at least two chances a day to exercise, provide enough space for their animals as well. The inspectors can also limit the number of dogs and cats in a facility. The U.S. Congress is also getting involved in regulating commercial breeders. The Puppy Protection Act of 2021, introduced last month, would mandate regular interaction between dogs and humans. The bill also demands dogs have access to outdoor areas and establishes cage and space requirements. That means dogs must be able to stand on their hind legs without touching the top of their enclosure. Congress has introduced similar bills in the past couple years without them going anywhere.